All right, let's talk about IMUs. Now, before you start configuring the Balance app, you need to configure your IMU. Now, this is a wiring diagram for an external IMU. You're going to wire, you know, uh, power, your ground, and then you're going to wire SDA to RX and TX to SCL. And this is not a connection. That's why there's a little X over there. Now, this is an MPU 6050. If you're using a BMI 160, you may also have to short a pin to ground on it to change the identifier number, but you'll have to look up for that, and it probably depends on your specific breakout board. Now, you might notice that these uh, RX and TX pins here are being used by this IMU, which means you cannot use them for a Bluetooth module, which is why I recommend using an internal IMU, uh, but not a lot of us have them right now. Um, there's also talk of potentially there being some CAN bus based uh, apps and stuff like that, but I don't know if they'll ever be as full featured as a Bluetooth module. So uh, it's really helpful to tune on the go and get you know real time data, statistics, and logging, and all kinds of stuff if you have an internal IMU on your VESC. Now let's switch over to the VEST tool. So, um, start off, I've got my uh, VESC and it's got an internal IMU, but uh, the first setting here is IMU type. So, I'm going to show you how that works. Let me just double check my notes and make sure I didn't skip anything. Yes, so something I wanted to talk about here is the fact that IMU, it's under app settings, but it's not quite an app. You can see it's not listed in the app to use list. So it's a little bit weird. It's an app, it's always running and you don't have to turn it on. So yes, IMU is type internal. You can see I move this and it is moving my data. So if I plug this external in, I shake it, it doesn't do anything. I shake this, it does something. That's cool. So let's set this to external. Now, if I write app config, I'm actually going to run into an issue. My VESC will become non-responsive and I'm going to have to reboot it. And that's because app to use is set to UART. Now, if it's set to PPM in UART or any other app that uses UART, it's going to be a problem. So you want to set it to something like no app or something that doesn't use UART or the balance app will selectively check if you have an internal or external IMU and enable UART based on that because as I mentioned earlier the pins are shared so we're set the app to balance and we've set IMU to external so let's write the app config and as you can see my thing just rotated because now we're using this one and if I rotate this one it's not well I'm shaking the other one it's hard to just move this one, but you can see we're using the external one. Now let's switch back to internal uh, because all I wanted to do was show you how that works. Uh, right app config, we're done with that. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when you've got your uh, uh, IMU all connected and getting data is the calibration. Now the calibration does two things or three things sort of, it does your orientation and it also uh, fixes up your gyro data. So you can see even when I'm not moving, this data is a little bit off from zero. Uh, you'll be able to see it better when this uh, spikes of data clears. But basically at an idle, these numbers are not quite zero. Yep, they're just a little bit off. Should be about 0 0.5 on this one. And that is going to cause a lot of problems with your gyro getting confused because it thinks you're always spinning when you're not. So the calibration fixes that. It does not calibrate accelerometer. If you are not an advanced user, don't mess with the accelerometer calibration. So let's just hop in over here. So let's first just say we mounted the IMU in this orientation. Uh, let's change this back to the default value of zero. We hit play. That goes, and it's, it's going to shake around for a while, and you'll get this green message on the bottom that says IMU calibration received. Hit apply, hit write app config, and boom, now we're perfectly level, and our gyro is pretty spot on near zero. Well, I'm holding it in my hand. This would be a better illustration if it was on a table, but I can't put it on the table at this weird angle, so.
You'll have to take me on faith for that. Now, another thing you might want to do is, let's say you've got your IMU mounted this way. Now, as you can see, if my vehicle is running in this direction, uh, the balance app needs to balance on the pitch axis, and this is the roll axis mostly. It's a bit weirder now because I calibrated some weird orientation, but you can go back here and put in a yaw offset of 90, and that is going to rotate it by 90 degrees and basically mix our pitch and roll axes. Hit apply, write app config, and now when we come back to RPY, this is now pitch. So if you've got your VESC or IMU mounted in a weird orientation, you can use that to fix it. You can also put in a value of 180, and that will essentially reverse your motor direction without using the reverse motor direction option, which can potentially uh, save you from having negative current values when riding forwards or backwards, depending on what you want. So that's just an interesting thing you can do. Okay, so... Once you've got your IMU calibrated and it's pretty solid, um, you probably are going to want to raise your sample rate to 1,000. That's what most people are using. It definitely makes sense to have a sample rate of equal to or higher than your main loop in the balance app because you don't want the balance app to tell the motor to do three different things based on a single value from your IMU. You want at least one IMU value and then a motor correction based on that. Now, if you were running, let's say, you know, 500 hertz in the balance app, it might make sense to still have a 1,000 here. Calculate two points, and that'll get maybe a more accurate uh, location value for you to do your motor uh, adjustments to. But I run a 1,000 for both. Now, the other thing is the filters, and this will actually completely change how your vehicle feels and balances. These are super important, almost more important than your PID settings. So... For Matwick, you've got your beta value here and the accelerometer confidence decay value as well. And if you're using Matwick, I definitely recommend a beta of 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.05. If you go too high, it'll start to be noisy and hard to tune. And if you go too low, it'll start to drift off randomly into space and your vehicle will just fall over. So right around 0 0.04 is the sweet spot. If you're using Mahoney, you've got these KP, KI, and you also have the accelerometer confidence decay again. And the default values for Mahoney are actually quite good. So uh, I would just stick with those to start, but definitely experimenting with all of these will really change your tune quite a bit. And then what else did I want to talk about? Yes, yeah, so all of these other settings down here in offsets uh, and rotation, the calibrator basically does what you need in these. So again, for a basic user, I wouldn't recommend touching any of those. Let me double check my notes. I think that is everything I've got to talk about for the IMU. Uh, basically using a yaw offset, running the calibration tool, connecting your external one. Yeah. All right. That's it. Hope this was helpful.